So, right, good, good morning. Thanks, everybody, for, for coming in. Uh, my name's Sean Nugent. I'm a Senior Account Director at Leo, and this is my colleague. Yep, and I'm uh, Sophie Miller. I'm the uh, Client Acquisition Director at Leo. Um, and we're here today to talk to you about uh, digital learning to improve the employee and customer experience. Um, and the little acronyms, which I see all the time now, EE for employee experience and EX for customer experience as we go through. So we thought we'd just tell you a little bit, uh, first of all, we'll tell you a little bit about um, Leo and LTG. First of all, can, can I just check? I know some of you know us. Have, have, have any of you come across us? Any of you not come across us? Who's come across us? All right, okay. So, so just, just very briefly, uh, we'll just talk about Leo is a learning technologies company. We formed uh, just over five years ago from two other companies. Uh, we're part of a much bigger group, which is called the Learning Technologies Group. And between that group, we have uh, a whole range of services from platforms and systems, from HR systems through to, within Leo, we focus more on learning strategy and content development. So today, we're just going to talk through some of the programs that we've been involved in and really what it means to uh, provide uh, employees with great digital learning experiences and therefore great customer experiences. So if you want to know more about LTG, you can come and see us at the stand. I know some of you have got meetings with us later on. Okay. Oh, it's me. All right. <laughs> okay. So yeah, today we're just going to run through a little bit about the link, and it's quite an interesting link between employee experience and customer experience, uh, how you can use digital learning to improve the employee experience, um, connecting learning and business data, which we, we increasingly see as something very, very important. So how can you measure the effectiveness of the learning that you're putting in place? And th the summary of all of those things is that joins together to create a learning culture. And how do you go, to go about using these things to create great learning cultures? Um, we're going to start off with a quote. And I'm, I was going to ask a question as who's not, not seen this before. I'm actually going to ask to turn it the other way around and see who has seen this before. Everybody seen that before? I think it's probably the most shared thing on LinkedIn that I've ever seen. Um, and I think when I first sort of saw it, I sort of probably didn't take much notice of it. And I think over the years, as we've done more and more work around customer experience, the thing that comes across more and more is actually if the employees of the business are really engaged and are really doing great learning, then it has a huge impact on customers. And I, I didn't quite get this, and like many other quotes that you see on LinkedIn, you kind of skip over them. But actually, so it's quite interesting to revisit it and think, yeah, um, this is really important, and that's what the, the, the central uh, focus of this conversation, really. So just to build on that a little bit, I'm going to hand back. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to pull this slide up just to talk a little bit around uh, customer experience and, and the impact that it can have uh, on your business. Uh, there's quite a lot of text on here, um, but what it's really saying is uh, within organizations, customer experience can make a huge impact on your business growth and your competitive kind of market. And we kind of see the connection between customer experience and employee engagement. And if you start reading any of the benchmark reports that are coming out um, over the last couple of years, uh, that alignment of customer experience and employee engagement is so key to the success of your organization, especially as there's so much change going on in the industry that affects every single industry, um, and many of your companies probably here as well, that if we can um, really enable a great employee experience experiences, great customer experiences come out of that. And then the next slide actually shows uh, the uh, kind of comparisons um, around this. So uh, customer experience has significant uh, competitor um, uh, uh, experience in terms of being able to really shape your business by giving a great learning experience and therefore enabling your learners to uh, take your uh, company forward around a great customer experience. And the last uh, kind of slide is, um, oh sorry, the second last around this is around success. Um, I think all of us believe in a, a happy workforce. And I think what we do is we look at um, people, process, content, and technology, and we align those four to really look at what the learning experience can create to create that great employee engagement and look at investing in employee development. 
I think also with the millennial kind of generation coming in, we hear this word over and over again, but they are expecting a different learning experience of what we're providing them at the moment. So how can we look at that and really drive our business? And the last piece um, is just around um, outperformance. And I think the more I read benchmark materials, the more I see the kind of evidence-based learning uh, kind of coming through is we can really look at business impact from learning data. And I think that's so exciting uh, for a kind of learning uh, um, and HR kind of space because we can really make a difference within uh, to our business um, and when we're looking at kind of the business metrics and KPIs around that. And it's the first time in probably a, a year that I've really seen um, companies coming out to us really expressing that they're going to put their training needs at the heart of their business strategy and they're going to align their learning data with their business data to show that if they have em engaged employees that they can make a significant uh, business change. So we're going to share with you a couple of examples of where we've been doing this um, but um, I think it's an incredibly exciting space um, and hopefully you agree too. Yeah, thank you. So thank you Sophie. So one of the interesting things, I think, is this um, idea that in terms of employee engagement, it, historically, I think many of you are probably familiar with the term e-learning, and I, I think we've moved away a lot from that. Uh, e-learning was tended to be a replication of uh, classroom-based face-to-face training, whereas what we're seeing more is a sort of full end-to-end -end digital experience. So whether that's um, content that you, you're viewing in a learning way yourself or whether you're sharing with others, a bit like people do um, and I think we all do in our personal lives with sharing data and sharing information across social platforms. We're seeing, we're seeing much more of that as well. So in terms of um, engaging employees, well, I'm just going to run through a few examples of uh, programs where we've um, worked on to use digital to help people better empathise with customers and better understand that the, what the customer experience is. And I think it's also important to say, quite often we tend to think of customers in a in a retail environment, and that's the first example I'll show you is retail. But of course, it equally applies any business to business environment as well. And it actually, even internally within organizations, customers don't have to be people that come into the door to buy something. It can be different departments that you work with or different areas of your business. So everybody has a kind of a customer client type relationship, supplier relationship. <laughs> So what's it good for? What can we use digital learning for? Well, obviously things like soft skills, things like uh, customer qualification, understanding customers, selling skills, actually digital skills, improving people's digital awareness and actually use of systems and platforms, product knowledge, uh, engagement. And really, I think one of the things we're seeing more increasingly is things like space practice. So moving away from the idea that learning is a one-off event that just takes place in a face-to-face -face training environment on one particular day, and that it's much more of a, a, a through-life process that happens from the day you start with a company right through every engagement that you have with the organisation in which you work. And also, I think we're, we're, we'll look at a couple of examples of actually helping people underst better understand their physical environments using probably slightly, slightly more advanced and new technologies that we're, we're working with as well. So first of all, I just wanted to share an example that we did recently uh, as an award-winning piece, which was um, game-based um, or gamified learning. And that's something we've increasingly seen. People don't just want to sit there and be told stuff. They want to engage with stuff. They want to play games. And actually, this is for Godiva. And it's actually helping people understand the whole learning journey that people go through or the whole customer journey that people go through when they walk into one of their, their retail environments. So it's very much about putting yourself into the customer's shoes. And I just wanted to share um, a story. I went uh, recently to uh, get a new phone um, into a retail environment, which was all pretty great. You know, it was greeted very well. It was all looking pretty good. Um, once I got into that situation, once we got into the conversation, I wanted a particular thing on a contract. Uh, so that went through a few systems. The systems got increasingly more complex and the person serving me could see that this was you know, getting kind of more challenging. What was interesting there, I think there were two things that particularly um, affected my experience. One of which was their systems were not great. Um, they were probably difficult to use, difficult to navigate through. But secondly, that the person using those systems had limited uh, knowledge of how to use those systems. 
The, out, the outcome of that was as a customer experience, it all took far, far longer than I was expecting it to, and it got very complex. And it really made me think about actually customer experience is not just about how you greet people, it's not just about the conversations you have, it's about being able to efficiently and effectively follow a process. And that was something that we did. We did a piece of work for um, Virgin Atlantic, and this was really about understanding, again, with some gamification, understanding how to use systems in a way, and this is a check-in. So you can see understanding how to go through a process in a really efficient and quick way. If you can get through, if you can get everybody through that queue quicker, it leads to less frustration, it leads to a much better experience, and actually what you find is people are generally much happier with, with the overall brand experience. So actually people understanding how systems and how processes work is absolutely central to being able to offer a good customer experience. It's not just about the soft skills, although they're equally important as well. And the last thing I was just going to touch on was also understanding retail environments. So interestingly, many things don't happen in a retail environment anymore. Many things happen online. So many things happen um, from a consumer point of view, maybe don't happen in a retail environment. But we have done quite a bit of work to help people understand what does a good retail experience look like? How, do you how can you use digital? And actually, we've even started looking at things like using augmented reality to make sure that you can uh, set up your retail environment in a way that is the optimum way for a customer experience. So there's just a few ways that we've been using digital for employees to help them uh, get to a great customer experience. Fantastic. And uh, to keep building on that of um, how, how do we support uh, the retail experience of uh, that physical environment with digital kind of aids. Um, so this is a piece that we've done for Bentley, looking at kind of customer profiles. Um, what I really like about this is it, it focuses on what does the customer need? So it's, it's about adapting your conversation with the customer and really understanding if they're coming into the store, what are they looking for? Or the dealership or within the head office, what is your customer looking for from you? And I think Sean's story uh, really highlights that actually for him, it was about speed. It was about speed, efficiency and getting the right phone and maybe some recommendations. In other spaces, it might not be about that. It might be about giving an experience. So actually people might come into the environment and have more time. Um, so how do you adapt the conversation for the, the customers that are coming in? And what we do is we kind of connect the physical and the digital together so that you can kind of have a blend um, that you can really use in your everyday kind of working environment. And then this piece is, is actually looking around product knowledge. Um, and again, where this uh, the kind of project came from, this program came from, was um, within the uh, within the automotive industry. They've got more and more products coming out every year. Um, and if anyone's bought a car recently, um, as a, a customer, a consumer, you go in knowing what kind of car that you want. Um, and you've kind of already done your research before you walk in. So when you go in, you're expecting whoever comes up to you as a salesperson to have a really good understanding of the vehicles themselves, the products, but actually an understanding about what you're looking for. Do you have children? Do you have a dog? How much uh, luggage do you need in your in your car? So what we've done is um, there was a huge amount of content going out to these retailers, and it was overwhelming. Um, it was incredibly difficult to find, um, and what we've done is we've curated a lot of that content, and we've streamlined it, and we've built it into a game. And it's a competitive game. We're talking about salespeople. So it's very important to understand your audience. Um, and it's a competitive game that can be played across the globe. Um, and it means that it, it is product knowledge. So it's all around building people's understanding, but not asking them to sit down and go through that content for an hour. It, it's actually on the job. It's every day. And it's constantly in their, in their um, kind of everyday uh, environment. So it's a really engaging way to touch that kind of audience. Um, the next slide is actually a piece around um, personalization. And for me, I think this is really important, again, because as a... Uh, as an individual, you probably all use Netflix, you use Amazon, you have a really good understanding of what you like and what you don't like. Um, and you want your, um, your uh, technology to actually adapt to 
you're learning your learning paths and what i really like about this is um this program actually uses the kind of netflix uh kind of structure around recommended for you what's trending you get stars you get likes so you can see what other people are um are, are, are kind of looking at um but it actually builds um what we kind of call like a passport so a learning passport so it means that you can move across industries this is for iaaf so um athletics so it really ranges from uh, coaches that might be doing uh, a volunteer job uh, for uh, teaching children football to Olympic champions. But you want to be able to move around and, and change your career and change the way that you go. And I think for me, it's giving your learners the visibility of what they can do so they can build their own development, but you have to build them the roadmap. Great, thank you. Um, there's no particular reason why that this one is in is in Arabic. So just to just to obscure the language, I'm sure if you've got any Arabic readers in here, you'll understand all of that. Um, just to just to revert back to something I was talking about earlier, this is actually some work we're doing with it. We, we earlier this year as a group, we released a platform called the Instill Platform, which is a learning experience platform, and we we've seen great success with that because this is really about people being able to share content with other people in the organisation. And actually, what's really interesting about this is we use this ourselves for our internal training as well, uh, and our internal coaching and development. So it's a really easy way of taking a video, sharing it of yourself, putting it up there, getting people to comment, and actually being able to comment within the video itself. So in terms of improving the customer engage, uh, the employee engagement experience, it's brilliant. But that also feeds into actually we can you can share customer stories on there. You can share lots of other uh, things as well. So actually, content. Digi the digital environment that we're talking about for employees is not limited to replacing content with push content to, to users. It's about people being able to share and collaborate as well. And I think that's a, a very, very important thing. Interestingly, one of the other areas that I think we've continually seen more kind of pull for is uh, high-end video. Um, and particularly in terms of looking at things like how do you improve the customer experience, how do you improve customer-facing skills, uh, video, and actually we're using it for even for compliance as well. Um, high-end video, high-end drama video, which you might all always think is a highly costly exercise, in a short two-minute um, dramatic video, you can get some really powerful messages across. And we can we can share some more examples of these with you, um, where, you know, perhaps not even using dialogue. I think we've always historically we've focused on words, where I think that we've got whole videos with, with no dialogue in which are just hugely powerful and get points across and I think increasingly because I think in people's personal lives you know it's incredibly easy to create high quality video on, a, on, on an iPhone or something now people are very used to sharing video and sharing pictures on Instagram so I think people increasingly more and more expect to see uh, media-led learning rather than things that are based around text Moving on from that, I think the the thing, w again, probably in, in certain environments more than anything, but we are looking, we've just done a piece of work in a retail environment to use uh, VR to help employees understand all the benefits that they're going to have as well. One of the, th the questions we always get with things like VR is, well, does it only work in physical environments? So this is for Anglo, so it's actually about using it in a, in a safety environment. Um, but actually, one of the things we have noticed is what it does give you is if you put a five-minute experience on VR, it gives you people, people have five minutes of concentration, and that's all they're doing in those five minutes. They're not trying to do it at the desk while they're trying to do all their other work. And it's a great, in it, that in itself is a, is a great benefit. Um, interestingly, Fidelity, who you may know, a financial services company, we've d recently done a project for them. Um, and uh, if you'd have asked me where VR fitted, I would have said, well, it fits in physical environments, it fits in health and safety, it fits in um, making synthetic environments of real environments. I couldn't quite see how it could work in a financial services company, but we commissioned, they commissioned this piece of work. And actually, it's really interesting because it's hugely emotionally engaging. And it's actually, it's about getting employees to understand the importance of people having pensions. Therefore, people can better engage with customers to get them to understand what they need to do about their pensions going forwards. So it does have a great emotional engagement. And I think the, the, the thing that people, um, people focused content with great empathy keys, 
dealing with things that are emotionally engaging, that's what we're seeing a great kind of growth in. And I think if you want to engage employees, those are the areas you need to focus on, not just giving them um, facts and figures. Perfect. And and just to come back to um, the the customer experience. And and by the way, I don't I don't know what industries you're in here, of whether you're in retail or um, customer experience. To me, is, uh, it, we we did a huge program for the NHS, and it was around uh, patient care. To me, again, that is still customer experience. So what we're looking at is how do we link kind of business performance to learning data? And we're doing a lot of work in this space. I, I hear a lot. I don't know how to get my board to understand that learning is important. We're doing a lot of business cases and using the data and the evidence uh, benchmarking to really link business data to learning. And we're not saying it's easy, um, but where you start is looking at where is your business going and what do your employee engagement look like to create that customer experience and what behaviors do you need to change? So these are just a couple of examples of what we're looking at. And I think I've gone into a number of kind of conversations where actually when we've kind of gone into these measurement workshops, we've, we've pulled all these data sources out and we've said, actually, it's wrong to measure the NPS score. We need to be measuring this, and we need to be measuring this element of this to actually align that with the training. And that's where it kind of comes into, um, we're using our uh, sister company, uh, Watershed, which is a, a learning analytics platform. Um, and what that does is it, it collates uh, the learning data and business data together, and you start small. You start small, you test it, you pilot it, and then you can go back to the business and start showing results, and then you can build up over time. Um, this is a, um, an award that we've just won for Caterpillar, and Caterpillar have 3,000 employees, um, and they started small. And the uh, actual data that we've aligned is looking at um, CX5, so their customer experience program, um, a concept that we call zero waste learning. So looking at how do we not create a huge amount of content for learners to consume and actually create content that fills the gaps of what people need. Um, and again, the final slide is just kind of starting to look at the, the kind of metrics between that. Um, but if I could leave you with anything today, um, it's kind of a start looking at what your business is trying to do and actually align your learning strategy around that to really make a difference because we can drive difference within L&D um, and we have the tools and technology to do that. So start small and work out where you're going.